In these videos we will see two things, how to make a ruler and how to make a vernier caliper. To make a ruler we need a few things, a straight edge, a well defined unit, such as say this, I've taken a piece of paper which has a straight edge and then I've drawn two lines which are separated there. This gives us a well defined unit. Now I could take this unit and measure say some object like a pen and it becomes quickly apparent that if my unit of measure is smaller than the thing that I'm measuring it would be useful to have uh, repeated measurements, repeated units. So there we need a, a, uh, some sort of unit and if we want to make something more uh, precise than say just this large we need to subdivide that in, if this is one we could divide it in half and then we'd have half of a unit. So this kind of defines a ruler. We can see that now with say this yardstick or meter stick where we have taken some arbitrary distance here, a centimeter or an inch and we've repeated that unit, so one, two, three, four and then we've divided that same unit, one, into millimeters here and then a half inch, quarter inch and so on. So this is the idea behind a ruler. The question quickly becomes if we look at this ruler here and we've taken a centimeter and divided it into ten subdivisions, we can see that it would be hard to introduce another ten subdivisions here. So the question is if we want more precision for our ruler, how do we go about finding that? Now that we understand how to make a ruler, we'll figure out how to make a vernier caliper. The first thing I've done is I've taken a regular sheet of paper with a straight edge, that's the first thing we need, and I've subdivided it into units by folding it repeatedly, like such. And this gives me my unit that I'm going to repeat. When I unfold this now, I can use these as guides for how to make uh, some marks on my paper. So I'm just going to mark where I see these folds, these are my repeated units, and I'll mark them as one, two, three. So now it's apparent that I could subdivide this into smaller portions, but as I mentioned earlier, it's going to be harder and harder to do this repeatedly. I've gone ahead and filled in the rest of these marks here, one through fifteen, and then now what I'm going to do is instead of subdividing all of these into say halves as I've done here or even tenths which would be very messy. What I'm going to do is take a second piece of paper here and we'll line it up. It's the same size as our first piece of paper, just an 8.5 by 11 sheet. And now what I'm going to do is, let's say I wanted to measure where half is between 0 and 1. The way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to move this piece of paper here so that this edge, we'll call this the minor scale and this the major scale, is at about a half. And so now what we are going to do is mark where the 5 on the major scale lines up with some mark on the, on the minor scale. So we'll put a mark there and we'll call this one half. This half here denotes where this edge is on the major scale. It's at a half. And now what we're going to do is take this, this half mark on the minor scale, we'll fold it over a little bit here, and we'll We'll see where that lines up on this side, here, and, and you'll notice when I move the, the minor scale back to the original sheet, now the half is between 4 and 5, and our 1, let's call this because it's twice this value, occurs at exactly 9. Now we're going to take our minor scale here, goes from zero to half to one. We'll fold it again and get some more marks at a quarter and three quarters. Now I've got a minor scale with zero, quarter, half, three quarters, and one. And we're going to see how this works with our major scale. So if I go between, we'll start with zero here, the zero is lined up on the minor and major scales. And then when I move my minor scale to say be at the half between zero and one, then my half mark of five and half on the minor scale lines up quite well. And then if I move it to say three quarters, I would expect to get 
this 7.5 and 3 quarters to line up. And similarly, uh, 2.5 on the major scale and 1 quarter should line up. Now we'll work with a vernier caliper. The way this works is that there is again an upper and lower scale. Here this is the centimeters 0, 1, 2, 3 on this axis here. And then on the upper we have inches which we're going to neglect for our uh, use. And then this is the uh, lower scale down here 0, 1, 2, 3 up to 9. And then 0 again is the minor scale. When it's shut, the vernier caliper isn't measuring anything that is, then the zeros on the major and minor axes line up. So we can see that this zero on the minor scale and this on the major scale, they line up quite well. And you'll notice nowhere else does that occur, that is the, the markings on the minor and major scale line up, except again at zero here and there. We'll put our measurement object here between the teeth of the vernier scale and we'll close it. Uh, when we're measuring something, there's a flat side here and we'll want to put our device in that and then close it uh, with a little bit of pressure. And then with that uh, value, we're going to see what the measurement is. On the major scale, it's the question of where does the zero on the minor scale line up with the major scale. So here we have a zero on the minor scale which is a little past this hash mark here. So that's five, six, seven. It's a little more than 0.7 centimeters. And the question is how much more than 0.7 centimeters is it? Since the zero here doesn't line up with the major scale exactly, we need to find where on the minor scale it does. So there's uh, no match here until we reach say the 6 value. So on the minor scale the 6 mark lines up pretty well. You could even say the 7 mark lines up better. So we'll take this 7 as our minor scale measurement. Now the question is how do we combine this 0 0.7 centimeter measurement on the major scale with the 7 mark on the minor scale. The answer to that is over on the far side of our caliper there's a little marking that says 0 0.05 millimeters. This tells us the smallest unit of measurement for the caliper. Now that we know the smallest unit of measure on the minor scale is 0 0.05 millimeters, that tells us what this 7 means. Each of these small marks from here to here is 0 0.05 millimeters and so since this, this is 7 and then there are 2 marks per increment, there are actually 14 of these small measurements. The way we'll combine these sets of measurements, the 0 0.05 millimeters on the minor scale as the smallest measurement with the major scale of 0.7 centimeters is we'll take the major plus the number of minor increments, in this case 14, and then multiply that number times the smallest measure. So what we get back after we convert to the correct units of centimeters, in this case, is 0.77 centimeters with an accuracy of plus or minus 0 0.005 centimeters. As a check, this makes sense because the value should be between 0.7 centimeters and 0.8 centimeters. And if we look back at our original measurement, we see that our zero mark on the minor scale is close to the 0.8. So 0.77 centimeters makes sense. Now as an example of what happens if our scale is slightly different, if, if we're using uh, a different measure and we come up upon the case where the zero on the minor scale lines up with an increment on the major scale. For instance, now I see that the zero on the minor scale lines up very well with 1.7 on the major scale. What that does for our calculation is we still have a major scale of 1.7 centimeters, but now our minor measurement is zero increments. And we multiply that times our smallest measure of 0 0.05 millimeters, and what we get back is a more precise measure of 1.70 plus or minus 0 0.005 centimeters.